In just a few minutes, I'll show you how to set up your own next-gen AI chatbot with Amazon's new baller service, Q. You can feed it documents and data from a ton of different sources, really almost anything you can think of. Gmail, Google Docs, S3, or, and this is really cool, have it crawl the web by itself. With such a knowledge base, you can easily ask it questions and get information that potentially could have taken forever to find on your own. And it comes with an easily embeddable front end for you or your customers to use. If you look at the documentation, it can feel really overwhelming, but we'll break it down into easy to follow steps. Let's go. If you don't have an AWS account yet, go to the link in the description and register. It's as simple as it gets. All you need is a credit card and an email address. Yep, Amazon wants your money, but this is not gonna be much unless you're really overusing it. Okay, so first, if we navigate to Amazon Q, it will tell us to set up our account for AWS organizations. It's real simple. Just type in organizations in the search bar and hit create an organization. Now go back to Amazon Q and choose user provisioning. Hit edit and add user. This will be where we add licenses to use our chatbot. The important part here is the email address, not so much the username. Just go ahead and type in an email address of yours and a name and select add user. We'll talk about how to connect this with actual user accounts in a bit. Now head over to applications on the Amazon Q pane, because next we need to add an application. The application is what constitutes our chatbot page and knowledge base. So click create application. Now, as usual with AWS, we can choose an application name and select if we want to create a new service role or use an existing one. If you don't know exactly what this means, leave it on create and use a new service role. We also have the option to add our own encryption keys with AWS KMS. Again, if you're not sure, leave it unselected and go with an Amazon owned key. Then hit create. Now we will create a retriever. This will feed data into our new knowledge base. It supports a lot of different tools and services, such as Gmail, Google Drive, Slack, Teams, or Jira and Confluence. And your data can even be on-prem. For this demo, we use the easiest one and just upload a document. It's the script for one of my YouTube videos about policy as code and setter. So we'll be able to ask our chatbot all kinds of questions about that. I suggest you start with a few test documents here and expand later on. But beware, you can change the retriever for your application after your application has been created. To change your retriever, you must create a new application. Okay, so before we move on, we'll take a quick look at the built-in web crawler because it's immensely powerful. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a full tutorial video just for that in the future. Here, you have the option to select source URLs by typing them in directly or adding a file with up to 100 URLs. So this could be a company's website that you want a chatbot to be able to answer questions about, for instance. You can use authentication if needed. A web proxy, secrets manager secrets, the usual IAM settings, and decide if you want to sync everything, including subdomains or not. You can even select individual field mappings for the web pages to crawl from. Okay, let's go back to our application though. We can now see a little summary about how the whole pipeline works. We just did a mandatory step of creating the generative AI application. Then there is an optional step, enhance AI. And now we're almost there. Click on preview web experience and we'll be able to customize the appearance of our chatbot front end. Select title, subtitle, welcome message and some sample prompts as desired. Hit save and we'll be able to go to the final bit. Select your application from the list on the bottom and click Deploy Web Experience. Stick to create and use a new service role. And now we need to connect an identity provider for the application. This identity provider will handle the login and registration for everyone wanting to use our chatbot. We have a number of different options for this, like Microsoft Entra, formerly known as Active Directory, Okta, or AWS IAM Identity Center, which in turn was formerly called AWS Single Sign-On, and is not to be confused with the regular IAM, which handles the AWS account users' roles. For this tutorial, we'll go with Identity Center, so type that into the search bar and open it in a new tab. We'll be continuing on the old one very soon. There, hit Enable and proceed to the next page. Then, go to Applications and select Add Application. Select the left checkbox, as we already have an application, and go for Next. Now we need to select SAML as our application type and go for next again. Here we can name our application. 
scroll down a bit and download the SAML metadata XML file. Further down, we have two values to fill in. The ACS URL and the SAML audience. Tap back to where we started deploying Q and copy the two values we need as highlighted. Now we need a user. So let's create one and be sure to use the same email address that we used in the very beginning to provision a license. When you finish creating the user, we need to go to Actions and edit Attribute Mappings. Here we put user email as shown in the center text box. Add a new attribute mapping. Put email and the same in the center text box. Be sure both are set to unspecified on the right. Now we can go back to deploying the queue application on the other tab. Import the XML metadata file we downloaded earlier and enter email in the same spelling as a moment ago in the email attribute of SAML assertion field. Then hit deploy. After a bit, we'll be able to click on the URL and to go to our chatbot. Greeted with a sign-in screen, we can now turn to checking our email and we should have received an invite link. Hit accept invitation and enter a password. Now, if you've left everything on default, you'll be asked to add a second factor for security. I strongly recommend you do this, with the easiest being the Authenticator app when you're on desktop and the built-in fingerprint or face scanner if you're on mobile. Simply download the Google Authenticator app on your phone and scan the QR code. You then have to enter the code shown in the app to connect. And now you'll be redirected and can enjoy your own chatbot for yourself or your company. If you have trouble with the setup or are looking for some help, my team and I will start setting this up for our clients in December of 2023. So hit me up on LinkedIn if you prefer a ready-made deployment for your business and check out my channel for more great tech. Bye.